Hello everyone and welcome to Scylla for Developers. This is the third video of a series dedicated to creating a to-do app using Scylla DB, Node.js and React. Previously, we created a front-end application that we connected to our back-end service. We were still using dummy data. In this video, we will connect our back-end service to our Scylla DB cluster that we created previously. So let's get started. All right, uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is to import the Cassandra driver. And for that, I'm gonna create a Cassandra object and require Cassandra-driver. Um, I previously installed the Cassandra driver using npm install Cassandra-driver. The reason we're using it is because it's fully compatible with Scylla DB. For more information about that, I highly recommend you go to the Scylla University or check on the website to see the compatibility between Cassandra and Scylla DB. Um, okay, so I'm gonna create an object cluster that is gonna be a new instance of the Cassandra client. But uh, let's go ahead and actually see what's provided for us in the Scylla Cloud Portal. All right, so in the Connect tab, I have uh, instructions here and I have the name of my data center, AWS East One. I have also the IP addresses and also in the JavaScript section, I can have the code to connect to my database. So here, as you can see, they used uh, a new Cassandra.client instance and with the configuration uh, information here. So uh, let me copy paste that. Um, so uh, the only exception is with the key space. We still, we don't have a key space here. We're not, we don't need to provide one. Uh, but we're going to create one and then add it later on. So if I go back to uh, uh, my, let, let's go back to the instructions here and actually copy and paste the password. So let me copy this and paste it in my config. Okay, uh, another thing that I'm gonna do is open the terminal and actually uh, create a table and populate my table with, uh, with a little bit of data so we can uh, test this out. So I'm gonna copy and paste the docker command here um, and copy paste my password so basically here i'm connecting to my cluster using docker um, and uh, i'm going to clear this out and what i'm going to do is just to go to the sql sh tab and actually follow these instructions i'm going to create a key space so a key space is where your data is stored and let me clear this out um, so yeah uh, and here instead of um, actually name it my key space i'm just going to name it to do's uh, one thing that i wanted to talk about here is the usage of the query language here so it looks like sql as you can see on the right side you can see um, create tables insert but actually it's a cql which is a, the cassandra query language so there is a little bit of a little difference there so if you want to find out more i highly encourage you to go through the ucla university for that let's get back to our and um let me also use this key space and create a table. I'm going to create a table named um, items and I'm going to have an ID of UI ID, name of text and completed of Boolean. And I'm going to have a primary key of ID. Okay, um, great. Uh, let me insert some values. So insert into uh, items, ID, name and completed. And I'm going to insert uh, a UUI ID function that's going to generate an ID for me and uh, wash the car as name and complete this false. Okay, good. Let me add another, um, another row here. And so instead of false, I'm going to have true. And instead of wash the car, I'm going to have um, completing Silicon University. So, uh, once again, Scylla University is a great resource for you if you want to understand how Scylla DB works. So let me clear this out, select everything from items, and there you go. We have our data right here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove the array that we uh, used before. And instead, I'm going to add uh, my key space to do's. Um, what I'm also going to do is <coughs> uh, I'm going to have an object. Uh, then I'm going to name uh, result, so const result. And it's going to be equal to cluster.execute. And we're going to execute the same query that we we executed before. So just select from items. And since it's a, 
actually an async function. I'm gonna add an async and await, and I'm just gonna pass result and, uh, and see what my result looks like. There you go. It seems like we're receiving something, but we're not receiving the right information. So I'm gonna do result.rows and here it looks better. Okay, so it looks like we have uh, uh, we have our data there here. Um, so now what we're gonna do is go back to our front end and um, and display that data. So let's go back to the React Act. If I refresh, it looks like I have an error. Um, let me go back to the to-do list JS. Uh, so let's look at the component a little bit. And it looks like we're expecting um, our items in result.data.items. Okay, so what I can do here is go back to my items.js in my backend. Actually add my result to an items object. Okay, let's refresh. Okay, there we go. So it looks like we're receiving our data. So one more thing that I wanna add here is the use of environment variables. So as you can see on the top, I have required.env.config. And that means that if I create a file named .env and populate with, um, with, with variables, then those variables not only are gonna be secret, but um, they're not gonna be accessible by anybody. So, uh, and that's a good practice when you have uh, sensitive data. So let me just console log here and you can see that I have my uh, Scylla object displayed right there. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead. Uh, I'm actually gonna try one more thing. So I think if I, we use just one IP address, I can still have access to my data instead of using all three nodes. So this is what your uh, .env file should look like. You're gonna have username, password, data center, node one IP and uh, items key space. Um, and um, <clears throat> your cluster object should look like this. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna trust you to do that and I'll see you guys in the next. In this video, we saw how to connect to the database using the Cassandra driver. We use the Cassandra driver because Scylla DB is fully compatible with Cassandra. We also connected to the database using Docker and SQL SH, and we queried the database using SQL. In the next video, we will tweak our front end to add an input in order to add more items to our database. So I'll see you in the next video.